Hi, I'm Lucy Caldwell. Welcome to On the Beat. Today you're going to meet a group of detectives, investigators, who are vital in making sure that crimes are solved here in Fairfax County. Their knowledge, skills, and abilities when it comes to chemistry, photography, physics are critical. They also have to be able to work as a team and collaborate. You're going to meet the crime scene unit. Uh, early in the morning and then we learned from the patrol officers who were the, one of the first officers there at the scene that um, some maintenance workers were cutting grass in that area and located what they thought was a body. It was a female, um, it appeared to be a white female. No one had reported uh, actually seeing this, uh, basically we just had a body in the woods. I was uh, the lead for the, uh, for the next homicide patrol units had already arrived on the scene. They're instructed to basically hold the area until detectives arrive. There was some sort of violent trauma on the body. We could sell it, tell by wounds that we could see and blood. The telephone switch box was next to the roadway and then to the east side of that box and the fencing was a, a very thick stand of brush and, and some small trees. There was no sign that anybody had trampled through there, so I felt confident we wouldn't be disturbing the evidence if we went in there. By the time we cut all the brush away, we could see into the scene. We called the medical examiner, told him what we had, and a medical examiner and an investigator from the medical examiner's office came out. The victim had received several stab wounds, and she had evidence of, of defensive wounds on her fingers. Our crime scene detectives are the ones who, who gather the evidence for us. Um, we work together with them, and, and they make suggestions for us as far as uh, what potential evidence uh, could be gathered from the scene itself. There's a constant uh, uh, communication between the two of us to, to make sure that each one has the, the correct information. The diagrams that we do We'll put some dimensional information on them to show uh, the distances between the roadway and the fence and, and the size of the concrete pad. And, uh, but this also supplements the photographs here. When we, we look in this area of the fence, and we can see the blood stains, uh, the red stains in this area, which are in an area that corresponds with the blood stain that is on the ground here. And this that uh, they're, they're in this same area, showing the proximity of the two and the juxtapositioning of them to indicate that the violence actually occurred in this particular location. We could see on the panels that there were, were stains. I had a call made to the telephone company and they sent out a crew. We gloved them up so that they didn't add any evidence to the scene. And they then had the tools to take the doors off. So we took them back to our office where we had a controlled environment. And we didn't have to worry about the elements anymore and uh, no one else would be able to have access to it to uh, destroy or change any of the evidence. Initially, what we're trying to do is try to piece things together. So we had a timeline that we had, had developed as to when she was last seen. She had gotten off work that afternoon. <clears throat> and this is when this, this business owner had seen uh, her and Matthew Daly together. Detective Bond contacted me and said that um, he had a suspect he would like me to examine and he wanted me to take a look at the prints that were on the door. So I retrieved Mr. Dolly's prints and went to the crime scene section and Detective Netherton came in and we photographed the door in section and made one-to-one, uh, -one, meaning uh, photographs of the of the um, prints. And so I sat down with magnifiers and began to conduct an examination and I determined there were several palm prints that belonged to Mr. Dowdy as well as one fingerprint. We can't date when fingerprints were deposited in most cases. 
in this particular case, there was a nexus between the palm print and the medium in which it was impressed onto that box in that the blood belonged to Jamie Coate and the palm prints were matched and identified to Matthew Doughty. We, we allow the evidence to take us where it, it lead us. We don't lead the evidence. The print may be the victim. The print may be somebody who just happened to touch something. So we, we have to allow the evidence to do the talk for us. They call, they call forensic evidence a silent witness. There was so much blood on the concrete that we were confident that the blood would have been on the shoes. And so uh, I wanted to use, to see if I could use another chemical process to see those. I chose luminol that when sprayed onto bloody surfaces will actually luminesce. And then we started spraying leading out and we had seven good shoe prints that showed us what direction and the fact that we only had two shoes, a right and a left. So the evidence that that gave us was that there weren't two people back there committing this crime. There wasn't an accomplice there. Or if there was, he had to have taken his shoes off and, and uh, not gotten any blood on his feet to be able to get out of there. So we had the trail of one person leaving. We have to prove everything beyond reasonable doubt. So probably, isn't, isn't good enough. We have to have definitely and, and uh, that uh, all scientific certainty, we can assume that, that um, this is what happened. There are cases where the appeals court will actually award a trial de novo, a brand new trial. They remand the court, to, the, the case back, and so we have to save, uh, save these notes. We archive them. The county has its own archive facility where they, they are, are protected and kept safe so that if they're needed again in the future, they can be, um, uh, they can be brought in. All right, thanks. So in order to uh, achieve the objectivity and neutrality, we, we try to disprove our findings. And when we're not able to disprove, we have identification. A lot of people have asked me about uh, the, the question, don't you find it so horrible? How can you stand to do this job? And um, uh, what, what I derive satisfaction and, and reward from is being able to speak for people like Jamie, who, who, who can't anymore, and, and to, to solve the mystery and to help the families through this process. This sentence was um, a life sentence. In my opinion is he took her life, and I think that he, uh, under these circumstances, uh, it was a brutal uh, murder, killing. And I think it was a good sentence to where we don't have to worry about him being out on the street and hurting anybody else.